Welcome back. Another look at Norway. John Phipps has a correction and some context in customer support this week. A couple of weeks ago, I committed an epic blunder that was gently corrected by several viewers. Here it is now. When I was talking about Norway and their rapid adoption of BEVs, I used this illustration of the comparative sizes of Norway and California. Only this doesn't show Norway, of course. It shows Japan. How I made this blunder mystifies me, since Norway is one of the most recognizable countries, along with Italy. I apologize. On the bright side, we now know that Norway, Sweden, California, and Japan are all about the same geographic size. One viewer, Peter Bacco, in Painted Post New York, mentioned factors why Norway is unique and may not be helpful as a forecast for the U.S. His letter was too detailed to be excerpted easily, but I, here are some of the, those differences that he mentioned. First, Norway has only 5.5 million citizens, with 84% in urban areas. But when I looked it up, I discovered the share of Americans in metropolitan areas is 86%. Norway generates over 90% of its electricity from relatively inexpensive hydropower, and it will take more time to see if electricity consumption jumps, however. Norway is one of the world's wealthiest countries due to North Sea oil. Now, their officials are aware of the irony of this and invest that wealth accordingly. Surprisingly, though, Taxes make their gasoline the most expensive in the world. I agree with his point that Norway is adopting BEVs faster because of these and other reasons that don't work out as well in the U.S. I was just trying to put Norway on the radar for anyone curious about electrification because we will get some hard data from Norway. For example, we should learn something about the cold weather battery argument. Norway isn't exactly tropical. Regardless of the generation source, we may discover patterns of when and how use choose to charge and how to solve the charging access problem in high density problem areas. Five or so years from now we'll have some much more useful data on battery life and cost of ownership. Finally, the Norwegians are not foolish people. If BEVs are not worth the trade-off, there will be commercial and political backlash. The rest of the world can derive whatever lessons they think applicable for their country. It reminds me of watching the first farmers use rotary combines. Yeah, I'm that old. We also need to keep in mind that BEV adoption is occurring fastest in the largest car markets, and the U.S. is not the center of the auto universe anymore. I think an even more applicable example to watch will be China. Thanks, John. And remember, if you have some questions or comments for John, you can keep those coming. Just email him at mailbag at usfarmreport.com. Up next, from one extreme to the other, a sudden switch means too much rain is forcing some tough decisions for Texas farmers. We have the details as we head in from the farm next.